Yes, guys, what's going on? Make sure you head over to stretfordpaddock.bigcartel.com. Check out all the new merch. Remember, members get 10% off. Go and do it now. See you later. Welcome to the Remember When We Were Mint podcast. <laughs> Is that official now? I'm, I, I'm, I love that name. I'm going to change it. You know do you know what I mean? we need to do? do like, we've just seen some of the t-shirts that we're selling there. Yes. Um, some belters. Yeah, they are. Including the Marshall FC one, which yeah. I'm not a member of. You're not a I member. Like the, but I like, I like the t-shirt. The Fair enough. Um, what I will say is, we need something like, any of you little graphic designers out there want to do this? Or Bocker, if you're watching. Do you know the, the trim? I'm sure you do. On the, the greatest achievement in world football ever. Yes. That trim on that shirt. Oh, yeah. Someone maybe needs to do like a... D and J or Housen's Brew, but with that sort of trim. Ah, right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now you're talking my language, brother. Yeah, like that. Get on to Bocco if no one, if he's, if he's, well, if he's watching, he'll see this. But if he's not, we'll get on to him. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, I was chatting to Randy Mullenstein last night about the. Mate, night I am so jealous. I don't even know why I'm cool. talking to you. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not even. You know but what? It, it I am not joking. Like everything, it yeah. came up organically. Because <sighs> like you may have noticed when me and Steve interviewed Renny, I was looking at Renny like. He was Sunday dinner. <laughs> I was like gazing into his eyes as he spoke because it was mesmerising. And it's a treat, you know, we're massive United fans. And to hear a coach who was there uh, during the most successful period in the history or one of our most successful period in anyone's history was amazing. So it was mesmerising and I loved it. And then when I see you going back and forth with him online and chatting about all sorts, well, it's, it's great. It is great. I was, I jealous, I was chatting to him great. about um, Johan Cruyff. Because like, I've just finished Cruyff's autobiography. Right. It's fucking good. Does he mention how he came up against the greatest team in the history of club football? He does. In 91. What was also very, very... Because I, I didn't know what he thought about United. Right. And I didn't have any sort of misconceptions or prejudices about what I thought he might think about us. Mm. But when he talks about um, Barcelona yeah. uh, and the way Jordi was treated at Barcelona, it was like... And thank God, Manchester United came in for him. Yeah. A great club with great people. And Sir Alex Ferguson's brilliant. And I was like, I didn't know this was his view. I didn't know this was his opinion on our club. And he was like, and do you know what? It didn't work out for him, but they give him a go. Yeah. And then he went to Alaves and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Injuries finished him. Now he's coaching. He's lost all his hair. So that was, no, the, that. <laughs> that was the sort of juxtaposition. bit. But yeah, he does mention... Um, Rotterdam, obviously. <laughs> but then, as we were talking to Rennie, I was like, "What?" Well, from the outside, yeah. Johan Cruyff, Dutch legend. Yeah. I was like, what is on the inside? What is Johan Cruyff to Dutch people? And he went, it's the fucking greatest player who ever played a game. And I was like, all right, I can see that. Yeah. And I said, as a United fan, we grew up with so many legends. Yeah. You know, your granddads are telling you about George Best and Bobby Charlton and Duncan Edwards and Dennis Law and... You know, Brian Robson is like around him. He's probably a little bit younger than you, but like, then you got Cantona and you've got your gigs. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. There was no time to be educated about Johan Cruyff. Was that the same no. for you? Yeah, no, you're hundred percent, mate. You've nailed it. Um, I grew up obviously like yourself, United dad. Got it games when I was young. It was all about United. I'm not saying like you know you don't watch other football, you don't hear about other football, but when. My dad used to talk about other players. He'd talk about players like Maradona. But even that gets a United slant. Rob had in his pocket. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and then when I started going more, I saw that great Barcelona team, not the one in 91 that we beat, in 94. So I saw like Romario, Cumin, uh, those types of players. And you're like, you know, you're forming your own opinions. Like, you already played in that game. Did it? I don't even fucking remember that. Um, so you know about these players. Obviously, you know about Johan Cruyff, but it's not... Hammered home to, but I'm pretty like, sure he played in that game. Like it was with the best. I'm the same as you. Best law, you know. My dad raved about George Best, and my dad was devastated, as I'm sure a lot of fans of a certain age were when he passed away. Mm. I mean, he was he was gutted. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, truly gutted. And I think that you know you get that taught to you, and you know about it, and you care. And it sounds a little bit sort of naive, not naive, but narrow minded. But you care more about that. So I'm more likely to want to know about George Best and look yeah, up videos and, than I am for Pele or jo and, your, and uh, also, Johan Cruyff or anyone else. in fucking 1990, it wasn't like Google was a thing. No. YouTube was a thing. It was like, oh, this player was great. And you go, 
Right, yeah. That's that then. That's yeah. a fact. Oh, there's a documentary on him, you know, at three o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday on Channel 4 one day for the next five years and that's your lot. And it's in Israeli, but yeah, it's, it's good. That's bro. it. Like, there was no, like you say, in Google, was it? It was like, you know, you might be able to read up on him, but you couldn't just go and have a search and watch some videos on him. So, no, I didn't know a lot about those types of players other than reputation. That's, that not in there. that's great, isn't it? Is that 11 versus Cheers. 11? Yeah. Um, but I knew, obviously, that Cruyff was a, a legend. Bit of a strange one as well, isn't it? Didn't he, go, he didn't play any at 78 World Cup, didn't he? Because he said, what happened there? Come on, so you've read his book, tell he, me. He decided he was going to retire at 31. So retired at 31. Sounds a bit like Eric Cannon, that, doesn't it? <laughs> And I think he said, I think he retired like the May before the World Cup in the June. Why? Because he said he was retiring at 31 and he was like, well, I don't want to be thinking about retiring when I'm at a World Cup. He's mental, right? Don't you think though with the Dutch, and I don't mean to be like racist, but like Dutch have them like very set in the ways, aren't they sometimes? I think so. Like they don't mess about, do they? No, they're mental. <laughs> I think I might be Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, do you when you see like <laughs> Dutch people are always fucking arguing and I was like yeah it's Dutch. like you know what I mean like House do you have the wrong way like said aggressively it's a Dutch name yeah House <laughs> yeah it's true that <laughs> it's, that's a good point but like all the like even the great the great Dutch players they've got that edge to man like Van yeah. Nistel had an edge yeah. like Van Persie had an edge yeah. do you know what I mean like Louis yeah, Van Gaal yeah, fight you yeah like do you know what I mean so it's like, and, like what I love about Cruyff is it's a bit like on a different level like with Kino but with, with Cruyff it's like go to this World Cup we've probably got the best team in the World Cup you're probably going to win it we came got to the final last time you come you'll win it no what? But, so but you'll win the World Cup no he was in the commentary box for BBC for it but what's funny is he goes I was sitting there going no I should have gone because <laughs> did they lose an extra time? lost yeah I think they were, they were the fav- they were the overwhelming favourites but I think Germany won it. No, no, it was uh, Argentina. Sorry, did no, it lose an extra time? Oh, sorry. I can't remember. It was Whatever in, it was, yeah. and he was like, I was sitting there going, "I don't mean to brag, but I'm pretty good. Probably would have made the difference in this game. Oh, I should have gone." Yeah, <laughs> no, it's like yeah. But what was also under wraps at the time was um, he had uh, armed fucking robbers coming into his house trying to kidnap him, um, and he was like, "When that happens." you kind of don't want to leave your wife and kids alone and fuck off to the other side of the world. Right, okay. Which is more understandable. Yeah. Listen, you know, I'm not knocking. He's got his reasons and if his family, you know, were suffering or whatever, and I get, I get it. But it is, you know, it's a mad story, isn't it? The fact that you had a player who was... I don't think any player's been as guaranteed to win the World Cup as he would have been had he played. Do you know what I mean? It is literally like, if you come here... It's in the back. It's not like Roy Keane in 2002. No, I mean, mate, don't get me started on that because I'll argue that he could have won it. <laughs> right, all right, we're going to go down this <laughs> rabbit hole, Steve. No, Steve, Yay. do you know what, mate? You said it, right? And I've had this on Twitter with someone because you know I like to argue on Twitter. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, all right, mate. just clip this up, send it me later. Yeah? Thank you. Right. Ireland in 2002, where did he get to? The last 16, innit? I couldn't. And they get knocked out on penalties, right? So they would have won that game with Roy Keane in that team. He's the difference between them losing that game on penalties and winning it in normal time. Roy Keane in his peak is the massive difference in that game. Right? right? I'll, I'll accept. And the, I think the route, I think the next game would have been South Korea. So they couldn't have beat them. What I mean there was something a, like that. There was a path. It wasn't There was a rumour that they were doping, Jay. All right, okay. I think it was something like Turkey, South Korea. I might have started the rumour. Right, okay. <laughs> but there was a route to the oh someone saying in the quarters, forgive me if I'm wrong, it's the quarters. There was a route to that final that wasn't the most difficult route. It was doable. And let's not forget, in 2002, Roy Keane was ridiculous. He was. Just past his peak. Yeah, but, but still, still, do you know I mean, what I mean? That much past Yeah, like, we're talking Robbo in 92, yeah? So, still the best player in the pit, on the pitch, right? 99 times out of 100. So, I think he could have got him to the final, and it's a final. Anything can happen. Anything can happen in a final. Didn't... Didn't Brazil play South Korea in a semi? All right. Yeah, something like that. I can't remember. So, I think Brazil ride Ireland. Right. All right. It would have been hard. It would have been difficult. So, when you say no players guaranteed to win a World Cup as much as Roy Keane. No, no, no. I didn't say Roy Keane. (laughs) I'm saying, you were saying that wouldn't have happened. But I'm saying he had a chance. I think he had a chance. Do you know what I mean? No one would have given Greece a chance in the Euros in 2004, whenever it was. Yeah. So it can happen. I mean, it's, it's very unlikely even I'll admit that. But 
it's still a possibility. You got to the quarters. Hell of a hill to die on saying that you think Ireland would have won a World Cup in 2002. Easily, Jay. Easily. R- what? Brazil? Ronaldo? Pff. What have they ever done? Shit, mate. <laughs> what have they ever done? <laughs> exactly. Ronaldinho? Where's the pedigree? Never heard of him, mate. Anyway. Rivaldo? Pff. Bore off. Um, so, yeah. So, Cruyff didn't go to the 78 one. Yeah. Um, but, fuck me. Not only what a player, but what a mind. Yeah. Because Ajax seem to have only just be sort of putting into play the shit that... Like, Ajax are considered a well-run club. Yeah. Right. Apart from what the last couple of weeks sort of tells us. Yeah. They forgot to register a player for the end of the window. They just got popped for drugs. There's some other shit gone west. <laughs> On the face of things, they're a well-run club. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of that is because Cruyff was like, fuck these executives off. I want footballers making decisions. He goes, and I don't just want footballers making decisions. I want them qualified... Like, I want them to go to school, I want them to go and get experience, and then I want them to make decisions. That's now you see Van der Sar as CEO, you see Mark Overmars as technical director, I think he is. Right, okay. You see Dennis Bergkamp as over doing like youth development or something like that. This is fucking quality. That's such a dream team, isn't it? Yeah. If you imagine being an Ajax fan, you look, I mean, compared to when you some sort of see other clubs, including our own, or some of the higher ups that make decisions, not the manager, obviously, but above him. And then you look at that, and it's like, all right, so who's, who's like the CEO? Van der Sar. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. pretty good. In. He won a Champions League, yeah. yeah. I remember He kind of knows what he's doing. Uh, yeah. All right. And not only that, do you see there, their fans, like, um, j- during first lockdown, that was when I noticed it the most, Edwin's, like, working from home in his little office, wearing an Ajax kit. <laughs> you can't you can't get mad at that, can no, you? No, I love Van der Yeah. yeah. Ima- and I imagine he was United CEO. So instead of that fucking turd... <laughs> Right. Oh, sorry. He's not actually CEO technically, Steve. He's executive vice chairman, which just sums it up, doesn't it? What, what is that? What's that? Why is he giving what, himself that title? What is that? No one else calls themselves that. So why is he? What is that? I know. Uh, anyway. Um, oh, yeah. So they've been South Korea in the semis. Yeah. And then, uh, sorry, South Korea in the quarters, Germany in the semis. Right. And it wasn't a. Yeah. Do Germany. Crap, mate. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. The. Um, what was I saying? You were saying about Edward van der Sar setting it, setting ah, yeah. his Ajax kit. Imagine him sitting there in a United kit. Men, no, probably memorable. still get abuse on Twitter yep. because, you know, a lot of knobs followers. <sighs> um, I don't know if you read that out. Did you read that out, Peter Kelly? Yes. Oh, sorry. Cheers for the Super, super chat. Chat. Peter. Peter is always a big uh, friend of the channel. Peter, appreciate your support. Um, yeah, it's, it feels like all he's doing that at the coaching level, though, getting the, the bods in, like, you, you Michael Carrick, your Darren Fletchers, your Nicky Butts. I just love to see a, the, the suits above him have, you know, a clue. The whole fucking reason for this yarn anyway that Go we're on. going on is, because um, I was like, did you ever meet um, Johan Cruyff to Rene? And he was like, yeah. And then he sends me a picture and it's literally him and Johan Cruyff. And he was like, it was well as at Barcelona. And I was like, Rene, you know when he was at Barcelona, don't you? <laughs> all roads he messaged me right he messaged me he goes Jay all roads lead to one place <laughs> <laughs> no matter what we always end up there and rightly so um, it was a cool World Cup 2002 it was it was a, a cool World Cup I enjoyed that World Cup so I swapped shirts with a lady um, and we both weren't wearing bras it was top where was this Bar Centro in Ashton at 9.30 in the morning. Bar Centro in Ashton? Ah. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I remember the I Ashton I was wearing a game. Kevin Keegan wig. Fucking hell. Right. <laughs> Jesus, what <wipes. laughs> uh, <laughs> To be fair, though, when we beat Argentina, I was buzzing. I was 17, Jay. I was 22. Beckham, Beckham getting his goal, man. Have you ever seen a, an harder hit penalty? No. I, I love the fact he that... He twatted. There's a brief man. moment where Michael Owen thinks he's taking it. <laughs> <laughs> Move out of the fucking way. <laughs> silly. But I've got a ball and door. No, I don't care. I've got unfinished business, son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Annie Bro says. Queuing up at 7 a.m. Annie Bro says. Fucking kids today don't know. <laughs> All I, the recent. I'm going to keep interrupting you. All on. the fucking kids today have had World Cups at good times. Russia was amazing. It was yeah. like it was made for European audience, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, where was the one before Russia? Brazil. That wasn't terrible times. That no. was during the day here. That was fucking class. Before that one, Brazil, 2010. 
Jesus. Now, I was there for Now that. you're going back. I went to Brazil. UK Times, fine. No, no. I went South Africa to 2010, sorry. And Brazil was 2014. Yeah. So 2010, yeah. fine. South Great Africa. times for us. Because I think South Africa is on the same time as UK, I think. I can't remember. Some right. bananas like that. Uh, before that, Germany, Europe, sound. So... That was the last good time. That was the last time we had a World Cup, which was had belt yeah. in kickoff times. Because didn't England play Brazil in the morning? Literally just said, I was queuing up outside Sorry, the pub I was at 7 I was, to, I was trying to read the a comments. fucking morning, Jay, before Sorry. I was going to college. <laughs> college. <laughs> Can't imagine you at college. Um, Annie Bro says, do you, re- do, you read, do you read comments? Not really, Annie. Sometimes. It Unless, it depends better. what they're about. If, if you want us to read it, mention the 99 European Cup. Then you've got cup, half a chance. And then we might read it. Um, well, we do. Um, yeah. Do you know what I remember about our World Cup as well? Hang on. Let me see. Was it I, t- I tell you what, you can ask your mate this. Was it the Kevin Keegan wig? Ask your mate this. Denmark, is he claiming that goal? Oh, Rio? Yeah. I watched that. He did a dance. He celebrated it. I watched that particular game Yeah. in the Lake District. Did you? Mm. Ah. I watched. I can't remember. I watched it, but I watched it at someone's flat actually in town. But I remember Rio started dancing. Michael Owen peeled off, celebrating, and the bookies paid out on both because I had Owen three now and they paid out and they paid, they also paid. It made a big World England World Cup fever. Um, so yeah, find ask find out if that, if he if he claimed it and if he, if it counts. Uh, Luke H says Kino would have slapped that fringe of our nines mallet. Do you reckon he was halfway through a barbers and he's like, "You got a game? <laughs> Shit! All right." Let's just go. <laughs> when did you lose interest in the England national team? Uh, go on. I'd say the, the morning after Beckham's red card. That's a great shout out, mate. Read yeah. the f- when I wake up and see a fucking dartboard with yeah, David no, Beckham on it. that's a really good shout. All right, I'm out. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, and fuck England. Uh, I'm, I was similar. I mean, you tend to get sometimes caught up in it a little bit, like say with 2002 with Beckham sort of back in it and, uh, you know, scoring against Argentina. 2018, I, f- I quite got into it because of, you know, Marcus and Jesse and things like that. And the fact that it was, a, 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 a in, in England terms, a fairly likeable England team because he didn't have any Gerrards or John Terry's who I cannot get behind. I used to wind up, like, sitting I can't get behind up on players. Facebook. I mean, like, they were, like, coming in and like, oh, I'm supporting, supporting Serbia in this one because of Vidic. <laughs> 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 like, it's mad though, isn't it? Because some people may remember, but after the Beckham red card, which was never a card anyway. Um, it was horrible, wasn't it? Burning effigies. Was it up to part burning effigies? The whole of them missing stand up if you ain't man you. Yeah. There's five United players on the team. Death threats. What you want about. Yeah. Chance to his mouth, his missus. And, he, you know, they went on for years as well. You know, his kids and everything. Like you say, the dartboard on the back of the paper. The You know, dross like 10 brave lions and one stupid boy as the headline. I remember one of the headlines just utter I was garbage. watching the national football hoping United players did well, yeah, no matter who that's, they played and for. It's, that's not being a top red, it's just No, natural. and that includes England when, yeah. um, and the only time I actually give a fuck, and I don't actually remember whether I was giving a fuck or not, um, I was seeing a bird, she lived in Uddersfield. And, um, Uddersfield? She, Uddersfield, no H in that. And she was working in the city centre. Down like, the pit. <laughs> <laughs> Down the mines. Just a normal job, bullshit Saturday job you do at college yeah, and that. Right. And, um, so it's too fat, was it October 2001? Something like that. So, I don't know if you've been to Huddersfield. It's like going back 24 years in time. It's been misses in the comments. She supports Belgium. No because comment. of Fellaini. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. <She's>, sorry, Steve. <laughs> Do you know, she said, we were talking, me and her, we were having, sorry to interrupt you, mate. We were having this conversation once, and she was going on about the run that they'd had to the semis. And I was talking about the same thing. We realised I haven't seen it because I'm talking about England. She's talking about Belgium. <laughs> so what the fuck are you on about? But yeah, go on. So, yeah, going to Uddersfield, it's like going back to 1987. I went to Uddersfield once. Did you come back with a sheep? I, 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 I can't remember. I might have done. Mm. Yeah, I think I did actually. So, I was walking around. Is it a city? I think it's a city, isn't it? Uddersfield. It's got a unit. Has it got a unit? Yeah. Right. It's, is it one of those cities like Preston where it's a city on a technicality? Oh, right. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Well, it's got a church. Right. Salford. Mm, yeah. I'm not saying that out loud. <laughs> Salford's God's country. Uh, Salford is a city and it's a real city. Yeah. And I apologise. Um, but So I'm walking around Huddersfield and I'm trying to find somewhere with the match on. I'm like, what sort of fucked up inbred place is this? That? <laughs> I can't even fucking watch the match. Not only am I stuck here... <laughs> Having a fucking wait for my bird 
like a dick. I'm now having a fucking mooch around the gaff, <laughs> trying to find somewhere with a working colour TV in 2000 fucking one, Jay. 20 years ago. Jesus, I'm old. Anyway, so I end up having a walk. I mean, it's all hills in Huddersfield. You go uphill, yeah. Yeah, you turn a corner, you go back uphill, yeah. right? So I found a pub. I think I found a pub. Turns out I'm in a biker bar. It's like a fucking Huddersfield Hells Angels. All right, all right. Realistically, it's a lot of dudes that look like me what, now. What type of inbred place is right. this? In 2001, I was pure boy band material. Now I look like a biker, right? I know, I've seen a picture of you like back in the day. You don't look like you. No. You just don't. It looks Maybe like that's a, why some people a, never a, saw me at games, yeah, Jay. Another, yeah. <laughs> you just don't. It's just like another person. Yeah. Um, <laughs> literally half a person. But anyway, so I fucking, I goes and gets in this bar. It's about five minutes before I realise. 17 year old stay, fit and all. Right. But, yeah. but pure boy band material. Yeah, he is. I know you don't believe it, but he's telling the truth. And um, and I get a fucking like glass of coke or something mad like that. Because I'm 17, I'm not drinking. And then I have a fucking scout out of the place. And I'm like, loads of dudes in here wearing leather vests. Shirtless. Stay. There's two possible bars that can be. Exactly. And we're not However, here to judge. Do you know what I mean, mate? If you went to a gay bar in Huddersfield, there's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. Oh, it wasn't a gay bar. It was a biker bar. Right, all right. It was a gay bar. Might have smelled nicer. All right, fair enough. Because this smelled like pure fucking hay, right? <laughs> anyway, they brought sausages out, which was belting, by Is the way. that a euphemism? Nope. Are you sure it wasn't a gay bar? Oh, 100%. <laughs> they brought like sausage and onion gravy out and they just put them on the side and was like, dig in. And then they had like buttered bread and I was like, this is fucking class. This is quality. They had a match on. Right. Um, I'm liking this. And then when Beckham scored, so I've watched it. Yeah. And um, and I probably did what everyone did. Like, why is he having another fucking free kick? Yeah, yeah. You fucking couldn't hit a barn door today, lad. Yeah. Then he fucking top bins is it. The whole fucking place goes off, doesn't it? Yeah. And they they had Steiners, the two pint Steiners, yeah, yeah. Steiners all around. I ended up forgetting that I was going to meet my missus <laughs> and just getting smashed with all these bikers. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds quality. They give you free. Sausages. Sausage and gravy. Yeah, with which onions. Is mint. With Onion. onions. That's onion quality. gravy as well, so you know it's oh, good onion mate, gravy. That's such a f that's, that's mint. That's amazing. Mm. And then also, then they're bringing out free Steiners. We're here in the city centre. Do we're you know what, we're out in the street on I the street. I guarantee that's probably like an EDL HQ. Yeah. It may There's be a good, a, good chance. Yeah, of to be fair, I don't know if they'd have let me in. <laughs> I don't know if I'd have been getting sausage and onions you and, let and my Steiners and that. <laughs> <laughs> I might be getting a style of wrap around my head, but do you know what I mean? Happy days. Sausage and gravy, says Ross Murphy. I like a deep tray oh, of it. Oh, man. Deep. That's quality, that. Do you, do you sit there, you like, watching a match? Some sausages doing over there. <laughs> Can't go first. There might be etiquette here. He's going up. He looks like he works here. <laughs> Can't be second. <laughs> Just give it a minute. Don't want to go cold though. That's thick gravy though. <laughs> Look how thick the butter is on that bread. <laughs> oh, I'm in. <laughs> Wait, I would think absolutely a lot less of you if you told me you didn't get involved. In fact, I'd probably leave. I'd be like, this isn't the guy for No, I'll probably try to stick four in one fucking yeah. round of bread. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it fits, it fits, it fits, it fits. No, I, I like holding it on my hand sometimes. <laughs> that, that works as a house at a sausage fest in a biker's bar. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? That's actually true. Everything you've just said in that, that comment. Don't worry about it. Only a northerner would get a stiffy over gravy. Rightly so, says uh, Dara Burke. Jake was thick gravy. Mate. Like, if you go to some southern shandy drinking fucking gravy place, right? Yeah. You're gonna get a wet hand. I didn't get a wet hand. No. Not even there's, a wet hand. There, gravy's not, you know, there's different sides of gravy. Thick butter as well, Jay. Oh, mate. Like it's, the butter's melted and liquefied oh, now mate. and that's running Hold down, on. it's running down my chin, Jay. Seriously. <laughs> Northern lads love gravy. Fucking do we. Yeah, I know. It's men, in it? I've Imagine not having gravy. I've got the a geezer walked, I was in Andover once. Right. A geezer walked in, asked for battered sausage and chips. Right. And then left. What? So what about? I was like, what are you going to fucking put on I think you had a word. Sand <laughs> to fucking dry it out a bit. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, you, what did you just ask for? Smile with you. Or if they have curry sauce, Jay, comes in a packet. It's disgusting, that. doesn't count. That is horrible. It's, it's actually wrong. 
Well, hey, repping Andover, says CTB. Santa I've made not, food says. sexual. I've made food sexual. Why do you think I'm fucking as fat as I am? <laughs> Someone says, should Paddock branch into food reviews? <laughs> Christopher Hawkins. <laughs> this is my <laughs> favourite ever super chat. Read it out with the respect it deserves. It says super chat just out of respect for gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Christopher Hawkins, you've smashed it, son. <laughs> um, do you remember the Ro this is Ross Murphy super chat? He says, "Do you remember the royal family Christmas episode where the daughter invites the whole family over for gravy and the gravy's full of water?" Yeah, I remember that. Do you know what I love about that as well? She says, "I, I can't remember. I think it's like Bisto or something, isn't it?" She says, oh, do you like it? It's my mum's recipe. <laughs> <laughs> the royal family's genius. It is amazing. Hey, they mentioned draws on that as well. It's meant to oh run God. nuts in our house. Oh, no. They really? Yeah, apparently it's posh. Where is it meant to be set if draws and posh? I don't know, because it's weird, because the kids are obviously mank. The, the James or Scouser? It, it's, it's obviously Manchester. It's yeah. Manchester area, like, because Ralph Little and, and obviously Carolina Heard. Um, Jim's a Scouser. Sue Johnson's, like, Beatles-type Scouser. And then Twiggy's a scouser as well, but Darren as well, our mate Andrew Wyman's manx. So they're all the youngsters. You know, I was in a pantomime with him. Was with Andrew Wyman? I was 11. Seriously? 100% true story. I mean, you wouldn't make that up. That's not something you'd make up. Mm. I was in a pantomime with Andrew Wyman, were you? Sadly, a big deal, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oldham Theatre Workshop. Really? In Oldham. That's meant that. He stands, he used to stand, when I was standing Jay, he was in front of me. Um, sort of like that, a massive United fan. Um, yeah, I think, I think, I've always thought of it as like... I was a rat, Salford. by the way. He was the king rat and I was a rat. See, Merely careers rat. went different paths. Mm. Yeah. You know I mean, we have to get him. You know what? We spoke to him once on messaging him. He's on about coming on a podcast. So we'll have to reach out to him and get him on here when we all this nonsense ends. Mind you, we can still get him on now. Yeah, let's do that. We've still got some tests left. Yeah, let's do it. Um, pie and mash, says Jesse Saylor. Not for me. Not without a load of gravy on it. Have you seen, like... Pie and mash in, in out there, London. It's green, Jay. What's all that about? What's that shit they put on it? What is that? What's that all about? I saw. I think Rio's done a fucking like, oh, a documentary it? Have a word. about that. And so's uh, Why? David Beckham. And the, <sighs> the, sh the restaurants that they go into, I don't know if you call it a restaurant or a cafe, they look nice. Like there's an old school vibe about them that I kind of dig. But then you go, what's that green shit, mate? <laughs> I did a thing at uni once where pie and, uh, pie and mash. And it was like they were talking a foreign language when we were in there. Me and one of these girls in What is the green shit? I, I, I don't even it's know. It's like parsley sauce yeah, or something. Yeah, something like, like that. that. And it's like, it's something in East End, mate. What? Yeah. What are you on about? So cotton and riddled with it. Yeah. Like, you're right, mate. What are you going to say? Dad was fucking paying for it. It fucking hurts, all right. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Jesus. Hey, have you got any gravy, mate? Do you chip bombs? Muffins. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Re whoa. Muffin. Really? Yeah. I didn't know this. About muffin. You. Muffin. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's whoa, a fucking whoa. muffin, Jay. It's not a muffin. It's a balm. No, it isn't. So you go, when you ask for a chip balm, you ask for a chip muffin? No, because I asked for a chip muffin. Oh, for fuck's sake. East Manchester, man. Get a grip. So it's like a different world over there. Do you know what I mean? Joyle's done way and Ash done way. More fucking serial killers, though. <laughs> that's a very good point. And potentially. That's a very good point. The world's best. Number one, shipment. Did I tell you about the time I did a... Um, I don't know, I shouldn't even tell you this, but I will I'll tell you anyway. And I'm not mocking it. Did he so. kill more old people than COVID? I don't know. I don't think he did. But I remember. In Hyde? It was a Hydeway, wasn't it? Hydeway. And, like, there was, there was a shooting there once. And I remember going there. And I said it was, you know, it was when Dale Creek was about. And I said, you know, we've had these shootings here and there's two police officers been shot. And I said, the eyes of the world are on this town. And I, I interviewed this guy, I just asked him, I said to him, like, you know, people look at this town and they'll think it's, it's, it's a horrible place. You know, what would you say to those people? And he said, well, he said, um, yeah, it is. He said, he said, Myra Hindley grew up down the road. <laughs> he said, Harold Shipman was a local doctor. And he said, and now these two police officers have been shot. He said, but other than that, it's a lovely area. Yeah, but other you than think that, mate, other than what? The, one of the three worst crimes in British history? Jay, they're decades apart. Do you know? Oh, well, in that case, no, I'm saying. do you know what I mean? What's the schools like around here? I'm thinking of moving. Honestly. Oh. Underpopulated. Absent, yeah. Empty. Absent <laughs> Duck says it's muffin up here in Berry, Jay. There you go. You've just lost some brownie points you, you, on Berry's side, are you? So what? Yeah, but bam. What the fuck is that? 
<laughs> Andy Jarvis says, Jay, while you've gone from dividing the nation by nation, then by <laughs> north and south, then by east and west of your own city in one conversation. Yep. That's what I mean. You, Don't get me started. Ernst and Eccles and Salford, get in the fucking corner <laughs> over there. The rest of Manchester will be all right. <laughs> get involved in the comments, man. Back me up. There's far too many muffins going on here. Where's the bam brigade at? Right, listen. Sometimes you can't beat the smell of good bread, can you? No, you can't. And you can't beat the, the smell of manscapes. Wow. Not only... Effortless. Seamless. Did it make your balls smell good? Right. Now your face can smell good too. Or other parts of your body. Is Not this why you smell a bit nicer today? I always smell fragrant. You, you do, but you smell a little bit nicer today. Is it because you've been using it Manscaped's Refined? That's because I am refined, Jay. You are refined. So, um, hang on. It says do not read this. <laughs> why the fuck would you put do not read? Oh my God. <laughs> why would you put do not read in the middle of an ad? This is the what that, do you think is going to happen? Yeah, what is going on here? This isn't what you should be showing him. <laughs> I'm worried. Scroll down. I can't read the whole line that says "Do not read." <laughs> it says "Don't read." All oh, right, right. I'm with you now. Right. Don't talk about your balls on this one. Sound. <laughs> right. Here's what it says. Everyone knows Manscaped is the. Per it says today in front of the words. Come on, man. Play the game. There we go. Everyone knows Manscaped. As the perfect package 3.0 for yes. all of your below the waist grooming needs. But they don't stop there, Jay. They don't, do they? Complete your grooming game with the refined cologne, the signature scent by Manscaped. I'm going to open a box, Jay. Go on, go for it. Do you know what I like about that? I like the wooden lid. Good, no. Is that? It is good. It's Right, slide it. Slide I can't, because it. it's not sanitary. All right, okay, well. Uh, with the same signature lot. scent that is in all of Manscaped's formulas, the cologne, that cologne. means perfume for blokes, Right, is a perfect complement to any collection. It's light, it's approachable, and it's gentlemanly in all the right ways. Think of it as your wingman. Nice. Every night to keep you fresh and ready for anything, like skydiving. Exactly. Great you, analogy. Imagine having BO when you're skydiving. Nothing worse. Don't need that. You want to smell Embarrassing. Fresh. Yeah. Especially because you usually, if you're, unless you're a professional skydiver, you're usually like baby beyond to a whole other dude. You don't want him going, Jesus, this guy smells this like... This guy absolutely smells like reeks. fucking beans and feet. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's calming. It's inviting. And it's a signature scent that introduces a light citrus burst before settling into the anchoring notes of... The, what? What? Where? where a woodsy masculine finish, apparently. 50 mil spray is even more hypoallergenic, cruelty-free, dye-free, paraben-free, and it's 100% vegan. Well, that's me sold. It's a beautifully designed glass bottle. Look, it's aftershave. It's all right smelling. Crack on. And you can get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using the code HOUSEN20. Your balls and now your body will thank you. That's manscaped.com, 20% off. Crack on. I think you did really well there. I smashed it, I think. I don't even think... I didn't even get the impression you were reading that. It seems to be just natural. Yeah. Especially with that whole do not read part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I'm not even blaming you for that. I'm blaming Baggers, who's producing, for putting that on the screen. The first just line. To confuse the issue. Do not read. Do not read. Jesus. Let's, nev let's never do that again. Um, someone's saying gravy balls. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Hashtag gravy balls, says Chris Man United Devil. <laughs> Ooh, gravy. <laughs> so what else call it? A sarnie. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's... Uh, going back to Renny Millenstein and Johan Cruyff. Oh, yeah. He sent you a picture, didn't he? Hmm. Can you not share that? I told you that before. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm refreshing your memory about it. I'm asking you a question on, based on that. So young Rene and um, Johan. Show me the screen a sec so I can make sure it's... Right on. Just move the comments and put it back on me. Look at that. Bit bright, that, innit? Turn your brightness down. You know. There you go. That's young quality. Re young Rene. Oh, yes. And a young, where is it? Johan. He's a chain smoker, one of you on Crow. Yeah. Hey. That's mad, that, innit? I'm probably Charlton the chain smoker. Was well. it? I think so. Back in the day, though, something, people used to chain smoke as they were running down the wing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just the dumb thing, wasn't it? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so you're having a conversation with Rene and Johan and reading his book. Comments. Yeah, okay. so very, wanted to learn more, really, about Johan Cruyff. So yeah, I, I asked 
uh, Rene. You know, what's the Dutch people think of him? Because from the outside, I don't think you can always tell. I think sometimes you've got to ask someone. Like, if I bet if you asked, like, someone who's got, like, a weird perception, maybe, like Beckham, probably a bit underloved in England, if anything. Yeah. And I bet if you asked, like, Spanish people, I bet they go, oh, I bet everyone loves Beckham yeah, in England. That's a good point. And then they go, no. You know, so I thought I would ask a Dutchman and say, you know, what, what's your sort of perception of the guy? And he was like, yeah. Best player that's ever played for. Is there any resentment towards him for not playing in that 78 final? In uh, Holland? World Cup, sorry, yeah. I think so. A little bit like, we could, so that was our chance and you in his, cost it us, basically. In his autobiography, he kind of says, yeah, well, there was a campaign to, I can't remember what the campaign was called. It was like, uh, it was like it was literally like, get Rene to Argentina sort of thing. Not Rene, like, get Johan to Argentina. Right, okay. Change Johan's mind or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was yeah. like proper, like, catchy thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he won't have it. Like you said, stubborn guy. <laughs> this is it though, isn't it? But like proper saw his ass with a lot of people a lot of times because he wanted it to be done his way. That was it. Is he is he the, the, the patient zero at Barcelona? Is he the one that leads to everything? Renus Michaels might have Right. You know what I'm on about it, don't you? For for anyone who doesn't, because Yo, I do. Guardiola. I, no, I'll, Mourinho. I'll pull it out further. Yeah, right. I'll pull it Guardiola, out further. Mourinho, Van Gaal. Like, they've all come from Barcelona. Like, is either doesn't AVB come through a little bit of AVB that from Mourinho, yeah. There's like... Cruyff. Like the family oh, sorry, tree. Um, what's it called? Louis? Yeah. Rijkaard? It's, yeah, it's, you know, it all goes back to Barca. It's, it's that book, Jonathan Wilson's book, right, okay. The Barcelona Legacy. It should be called The Johan Cruyff Legacy. Is, that, is he the star of it all? Renus Meikles really is big in I'm not going to pretend I, I know who he is. I think he was Ajax manager, but he's right. also a Dutch manager. Okay. Um, and I think he was the guy, and again, without this move, this probably didn't happen, but I think Renus Meikles was the guy that took Cruyff to Barcelona in the first place. Ah, right, okay. And then, obviously, Cruyff takes over as manager, and then we start seeing all these players who, and, and people. Yeah, and he, he had he had a big hand in wanting all sorts of stuff, um, youth development-wise and training-wise and tactics-wise and, and all the rest of that sort of thing and La Mesa and arguably like your your Iniesta Xavi generation is Cruyff's. Right, okay. Yeah. Really. Even though like he's removed from them, the legacy's his. Yeah. Really. Well, sometimes it's like that, it's like with the Scouts, isn't it? Everyone goes about Shankler. Now, Paisley won a lot more and I don't want to use this as an example but it works. But Shankly's the one that started it all. He's the one that turned them from, you know, whatever they were. League. Wasn't Paisley a physio? I can't remember what he was. And, but it's something like that. Yeah, something like that. And yeah, he might be right, actually. And then he has, you know, wins all those, you know, European Cups by playing part-timers all the way to the final. But, you know, Shankly's the one that started it. So is it like that with Barca? Croy's the one that's... Obviously, they're a massive club, but he's the one. I mean, the first Champions League was under him, wasn't it? Because they didn't win the first one until 92, did they? Yeah, after they... After the loss to us, yeah, in the in the bigger competition, in the bigger competition, one that matters. <clears throat> yeah. you then for Angle, we're not going to win a Europe Cup in this club because United beat us, so we'll try and win this European Cup thing. That's obviously a little bit yeah. less prestigious, but still counts as a trophy. But yeah, he was he was instrumental in that. But when you look at like the fingerprints of it, just go across Europe and the the sort of like the reverberations of what he tried to do. Pep is a disciple of of his. He's also a disciple of Bielsa. It, it, but the the kind of all roads really lead a lot to Cruyff. And it's, mad. it's mad for a, a player who was that good because you don't get that. No, you don't. Players who were the top level, and I mean the yeah, greatest go, ever. Well, I just fucking beat four Ben and bang in the corner. What's matter with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you can't do that? Right, get out. Watch. There you go. Now just repeat what I've just done. Mm. Well, you're fired. But you don't tend to get the players like, you know, look at the greatest players we've seen. Some of the best players we've seen. Brian Robson didn't really happen for him as a manager. Roy Keane didn't really happen for him as a manager. I know Scholes is still sort of finding his feet or whatever. But, you know, the best players and especially the very, very best players don't tend to have success as a manager. He's the exception to that rule because, I mean, maybe now you can throw in Zidane as well. But Cruyff was one of the best players ever and I, then I had unparalleled managerial success. Zidane's not like written the doctrine no no on how to be a footballer and, and like gone no 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 you're all doing f uh, play development wrong this is how you do it yeah Zidane's won some trophies yeah but has he changed football 
No, no. He's, he's played the game as it as it is. He's he's understood the rules and, and played it exactly. He's not looked at the whole whole sport and gone. I think we need to rip this up. <laughs> it's, I, I mean, it's almost, this it, it's almost Busby asking it, mm. and I won't say that lightly. But it's that whole thing of looking at it and going, no, like. I, and I, I, and it working. Yeah, I know something of, everyone else doesn't know. You get loads of people who scroll shit in, you know, or scroll fucking things on walls in toilets in shit. <laughs> it doesn't mean they're right. <laughs> you know, and it doesn't mean that they're successful with their fucking <laughs> mad hair brand ideas. <laughs> but both Busby and Cruyff managed to look at the entire picture. And I would argue Fergie never changed the game. No, Fergie I don't, was no. ultimately very, very successful, but he wasn't himself a revolutionary of the game. He didn't, you didn't look, there's not a post and pre- Ferguson, except Manchester United. No. That it doesn't go around the game. Now, he might have had a big impact on certain things in the Premier League, but he's not changed the game. So Matt Busby changed the game by saying, you can play young lads. Yeah. And watch what they do. And the manager <coughs> can put his tracksuit on and get on the pitch with them. Mental. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you not in your office? Where's your trilby? Yeah. And we are going to play in Europe. That's the future. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Visionary. Vis- completely. Completely, in so many ways that are still felt now. Yeah. No one's ever going to change the fact that Matt Busby, when Chelsea said, no, we're not going to do it because the FA won't let us, Matt Busby said, well, yeah, we're the, doing the it. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we'll do so. You know what I mean? It, it's, you're always going to have that, yeah. and it always goes back to him. And, and I think Cruyff, Cruyff is that, Cruyff. and yeah, in 100% that. It's fascinating, uh, that. it really is. And I don't know how many more people want, would want to say Pep was, but not really. He built on what Rijkaard had done, and he built on what Cruyff had done, and he built on what Bielsa had done, but I'm not sure he's entirely changed the game. Norwich City played fucking tick attacker in 1993. Southampton under your mate Pots played tick attacker. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? It doesn't, you know. It, it, I mean, that's not, after it. Sorry, that's after it. Yeah, but. It's not, this isn't new. Mm. People have played possession football, and but really, it came, jump at a boy, yeah, and blow your man at the same Go time. Go on. So in the first, um, Football and we will read the super chat in a minute, baggers. Don't worry. The first, super, the first um, international between England and Scotland, which I believe was 1872. Right. England was a, a much bigger side, known for the kick and rush kind of game, yeah. which was all about charging. And Scotland looked at it and went, "We get fucking murdered." So let's pass the ball around. Yeah. And Scotland didn't lose for the first 16 internationals because they basically developed a passing style of play, which was completely at odds to everything that was being done on the world stage at the time. So passing game versus like the more physical sort of direct game, it's happened for 150 fucking years already. Right, okay. 129 if you want to get technical. I'm glad you did the maths because <clears> I wasn't able to. So, 149. Like, it, it fucking, it's not brand new. <laughs> right. Like, but some of the concepts of Busby, some of the concepts of Cruyff, and I, I'm fascinated by him. And, I, you know, I'm open to, you know, Brian Clough fascinates me. Did he change the game? Not really. Ultimately successful playing within the parameters of the rules of there's, games. There's that a exists. difference in there between changing a game and doing something in a different way. Do you yeah, know what I mean? You like can be Clough extraordinarily is one of successful. A kind. Yeah, and he was that. Yeah, unbelievably successful. Did things that even to this day we look at and go, "That's mental," but it worked for him. What he did was basically taking over where Nottingham Forest are today <laughs> and winning a Champions League for him in 24 months. <laughs> Imagine, Imagine me sitting here going, "Here's what we're gonna do." Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. You go, that's not happening, is it? Yeah. Is it not? That's literally what the fucking crank did. Right. Let me just read these because I've got Joel Presbaluski. Uh, are there Italian delis in Manchester? If you're ever in the US, you should go to one. Um, if that's an invite, we'll be there. I'm sure there are, but I don't know of any. Yeah. I mean, Northern Quarter's got everything. Oh God, yeah. Um, Stephen McKinney says Matt Busby got it from Jock Steen. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I think Certainly that not the youngsters. And if you look at it, Matt Busby as well. He was doing that in the army during the war, working with like like Joe Mercer. I think was his assistant at one point. He went on to obviously uh, have success. We say without spending five billion quid in the process. Mm. Um, Bad idea. I, know, I, I don't really know. They're probably opposite fans. Probably don't even know who he is. Um, but Busby was doing it sort of from day one throughout his career. So there might there was I know there was a sort of connection there. A lot of these coaches knew each other and worked together and were actually friendly. But I don't know if he got it from him. I think Busby was a pioneer. And he's, he's, you know, he's, he's renowned as the, the godfather of football for many reasons. And that's one of them. And you know my thoughts on Jimmy Murphy as well. He, he was a massive part of all that. But they pioneered it. People like Clough, like Pep Guardiola, like Mourinho. I don't think they're necessarily changing it the way things are done. They're just very good at it. 
at what they do mm. and they're incorporating different styles that are already there. Whereas, you know, you're talking about someone like Cruyff, like your Busby's, they're inventing things. Mm. You know what I mean? Literally, that's not been done before. Mm. So, you know, I'm, I'm well open to, you know, if anyone else has got any other recommendations for shit like that, I'd be, um, I'd be bang at any of those. That's a good point by Santa Notch. Uh, Peter Taylor is the most underrated co- coach. Clough was the main man, uh, was the man manager, but Taylor was the scout and found the players for him post-Taylor. Clough was less successful. Yeah, that's a really good point, Matt. I think, I think he was also were. a proper piss can, which clearly affected a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Um, but they, they obviously worked well together. And I think to a lesser degree, it was the same with Murphy and, and Busby. I think those two were perfectly complemented each other. Yeah. And a lot of the time, it, Murphy was doing the sort of one-to-ones and the, you know, nurturing that, and it was Busby. That's it. I things. don't I don't necessarily think we've had any of the um, sort of storytelling in depth, maybe as much as we, we could have, about what the relationships of a lot of those people was like and and even with Fergie it's still a massive fucking mystery and you know I do my best that you know I absolutely bend the fucking ears out of anybody I managed to get that's you know worked under him and stuff like that to try and to get some sort of an insight and you know we tried it here with Rene like what does a day look like from nine o'clock go (laughs) it's that's what it's like it's like uh, RH in the coaches Alison football genius by the way yeah RH knows RH up the RH (laughs) Um, yeah, Jock's team still playing while Busby was building the babes. Yeah, I don't. Um, Danny Eagleton, glad you mentioned Jim Murphy. His impact on the MUFC should never be able to. I'll mention him every. I think I mention him every week. I'm on this podcast for a reason, mate. Cause I think uh, Ian Greenhouse says you should study Jimmy Hogan. Uh, he invented total football at the Dutch and the Barcelona used. Okay, I will do. Have you ever looked at like South America? I know you have, but I'll ask you anyway. South American football. Yeah, some of the things I want to go. Like, it's mad, isn't it? Because a lot of the, like that started from people going over from Europe. Yeah. And, you know, that's what a lot of them have unheard got, like, of like Scotsmen and people who that's just went over got, like and Corinthians and stuff they're all got like British <laughs> kind of names so some random dickhead just went <laughs> over there and was like this is a football what 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 <laughs> now kick along natives yeah. oh hang on a minute no you're... no no don't <laughs> pick it up with your hands you savage <laughs> yeah oh what's this now you're better than everyone else are. that's it <laughs> <laughs> no don't play it in the street with no socks what are you doing <laughs> kick it harder <laughs> it's mad it is but I love all that. I love all those stories when you look at like Argentinian football, the influence of some of the people went over there and obviously Bizarre. Athletic Bilbao. Yeah. They're not called Atletico. It's called Athletic Bilbao. It's a British guy that um I think it was Newcastle he's from, I think. Something really? Like Something like that. It's quality. That. Might be wrong. Might be might have been Southampton, which is where they play red and white, maybe. Oh. One of those. Uh yeah. Football in South America was started by the Englishman who went to work there on the railways and yeah. See? Some knowledge in our comments, isn't there? Corinthians is from the Bible, come on. <laughs> yeah, but it was also from a guy that uh, was part of the club Corinthians in the UK, I believe, that went over there. It was Sunderland. I thought it was Sunderland. Ah. <clears throat> Typical Brits going everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then moaning when we get beat by him. I'd say one thing that's been good about this podcast. We've proper nailed the defence, the centre-back. Fuck that, no one cares. Does anyone, do you think anyone actually watches that podcast now thinking they're going to talk about this title? And what's I, on the I hope not. I don't know. What is it you said? Fuck him. Well, no, not oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't mean it. Remember when we were Mint Podcast? Yeah. That's what we do, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We talk about 991 Cup and it's called Final. Alison goes through what books he's read and what, whether it's a muffin or a chip bar, we all know the answer. And then, yeah, that's the way it takes us. Do you know how close rugby was to being the game that the world... <sighs> um, so you're losing me now. Go on. No, but you never know. It could have started like this. So rugby was extremely close to be, being the game that the world played. And what was the fucking reason? Is this? I know, I know you're gonna get angry, but I'll ask you anyway. Is it rugby league or union? Unfortunately, it was rugby union, so right. I'm not happy about right, this. Okay. Um, but it was literally about you know, which game got there first, really. Be- because rugby union is quite popular in it in like South America still, like Argentina. A couple of spots, like, yeah. A couple, a couple Argentina of spots. are quite big into it, I know. Um, but it's not like that. Yeah, you're right. Like Brazil, I don't think it's massive over there and other places. It's a pure fucking tourist sport. So the reason that the, the Rugby Football League <laughs> split from it in 1895 yeah, yeah. was because the Northern Mills and stuff like that, and r- literally Rugby League might as well be called the fucking M62 sport because right. it goes from like St. Helens yeah. all the way to Ull. Yeah. And then does like Salford, Leeds, fucking Bradford, yeah, yeah, et cetera yeah. in the middle, Castleford. That's it, really. It what? is mad that, like, the, yeah, the towns are massive on rugby league because it's yeah. like such a odd mix. It's literally the M62. It's like yeah. every junction, you know, from fucking Saddleworth, Halifax, fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you literally go across the M62. Yeah. Well, they got a town. Have they got a team? Who? 
Unslet, of course he fucking have. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, where's this? Uh, St. Ellen's. Where's this? Wigan. Yeah, of course they've got a fucking town, you dick. Salford. It's literally M62. Um, but the reason they all, they all fucking split from what was going down south is down south they wanted to keep it as strictly amateur. Yeah. Um, but back in the day, like, in the 1860s, 70s and 80s, there was getting some more, more crowds than football was. Really? Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to dig it out and I'll get it for the next podcast, the reason why football and not rugby became Is it not sport. just because football's better? No. No, it was a, it's a mad reason where you go, fucking hell, really? Because you look at Hull, Hull's got one football team yeah. and DOS rugby league teams. Yeah. That could have happened more well, places. You mean Wigan? I know they've got Wigan Athletic, but it's a rugby town. Of course it is. Do you know what I mean? It really I mean, St. Ellen's. Yeah, mate, come on. One of the most successful rugby league team, teams ever. And, mm. um, and St. Helens football team are in Northwest Counties. Exactly. exactly. And look at where St. Helens is. And like you're surrounded by all these football teams that are uber successful, but you're a rugby town. And in Leeds, you've got a very successful rugby league team. And I, I don't even know what their football team is. Warrington. Warrington. Warrington's in between Manchester and Liverpool. Yeah. Now, Manchester's got a lot, of, well, got one big football team. I think the Scousers might have a couple of teams. I'm not sure. Yeah. And yet they're rugby, t- rugby town. That's it. But it's on the M62. <laughs> See, it's mad, isn't it? Hey. But yeah, it's, it's very interesting about how and why. So obviously, 1895, the Northern Rugby Union. Witness, someone says, yeah, good point. Yeah. It's got a, a, a junction on the M62. Um, the, um, what's it called? The, the Northern teams yeah. wanted to pay their workers for having Saturday afternoons off so they could play. Yeah. And obviously all the fucking Tories down south was like, oh, you don't play for money. No, it's a gentleman's sport. Yeah, bingo. Right. And it, it, rugby union only went professional, even though it fucking definitely was professional before this, in like the 90s. Really? 1990s. Bloody hell. That's mental. That's how you know it's tore it up as fuck. <laughs> I think we've complimented a lot of people on this podcast today, me and you. Especially you. You've complimented everyone in Rosfield. Everyone likes rugby union. Cockneys. Have I missed anyone out? No, I think that's it, yeah. It's been full of it. Who was that? Tories as well, yeah. I've done well. What's their problem, mate? No, 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 no I'm, not, I'm not arguing about it. Rugby and lacrosse. And Peter Kelly again. He says, I like international rugby union since it's the only sport other countries play that Ireland are actually good at. Fair enough. I've never got into rugby, mate. I haven't. I know you used to play it for Salford, didn't you? And I'll give you a lot of that because it's Salford. Well done. Um, I used to... Cover it slightly. I used to cover the press conference rather than the actual games, more or less, because he had, was it Marwin Kukash? He was just off his box tits. office. Is he United fan as well? It may. Some of the most bonkers press conferences I've ever been in, and I've been in Louis Van Gaal press conferences, <laughs> were with him. Yeah. Where he'd literally just get his, well, not literally, but he'd well, get players he throw the club, them right under the he bus. He sold the club back to the fans. Yeah. Yeah. But you've got to, you've got to respect. And in doing so, they appointed a couple of ex players to the board and um, obviously went on and had their most successful seasons ever. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. He just, <laughs> he, just, he just seemed like... I mean, he's fully batshit crazy. Yeah, I was about to say, like... But yeah, in fact, was, you got to give him props no, for he's, being he's, the guy that sold good. the club back to the fans. Uh, rugby league, epic to watch. Rugby union's epic to play. Wrong. Right, here's the fact, right? So, obviously, I don't know how many of you know this. Um, Go on, I was going to ask you something. I, I used to play rugby league up until I was 21, and then people realised that I wasn't that good, and I never got offered a, a contract to play first team. But I played academy for five years. Right, okay. Um, from 2000 to 2005. Right. I was playing academy, rugby league, Super League Academy, for a couple of years with Salford, three years with Salford, and then I joined the army, and then did a year with Keefley, and then did a year with Doncaster Dragons. Okay, doke. Um Now... Rugby league's hard. Rugby league's like doing a bleep test and getting like attacked by a gang in the middle of it like four or five times, right. and getting twatted. Right. That's how you feel after you've done it. It's like an 80 minute bleep test with assault in the middle. Yeah. Um, rugby union. So I'd play a game of rugby league, right? Yeah. And I know you look at me now and I'm fat and you go, don't think so. But the one thing I had about me was fitness and work rate. Yeah. That was literally all I had in my locker. I wasn't big for my, for my position. But I had fitness and work rate, and I would fuck you up. Right, okay. And I'm not taking it in because that's a mugs game. <laughs> but I'll do, I'll do 40, 45, 50 tackles a game, right. which is a fucking severe amount of tackles. A you game. are right because I'm not, I don't know anything <clears throat> about this, so you're speaking to a layman. Now I saw um, Ireland Rugby Union piping themselves off because one of their players made eight tackles in a game, and, and you I was were like, doing 40, uh, 40 to 50. <laughs> 
it's I'm just such ask, a different. Is there a massive it? difference between Union and League? Yeah, because I'm. Which so, is, it's, everything's just intensified. Right. Okay. The clock stops and the ball goes out in rugby league. Right. The clock never goes out. Join the fucking about kicking it line outs. Yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. The clock stays going. Okay. I I could play a game of rugby league and I need to go and have a nap afterwards. Right. Fuck. Like literally yeah, drained. Yeah, yeah. I could play a, a game of rugby union. Play another game of rugby union. Right. <laughs> like I played for I played for my regiment in the army, which is apparently considered as a big thing. Yeah. And I was bored. Really. Bored, mate. Is it? Is it? Right. Okay. Yeah. Is it? A lot of people play both because I know that was became a thing, didn't it? I, I'm not really. Like when was it Martin of Fire and all that switched coats, as you say? But not really. Right. Martin of Fire was at Salford when I was there. Was it? It's like having Pele in your team. Yeah, I remember because even I was never into rugby, but I knew Martin of Fire was because he was like the superstar, wasn't he? Like Ellie Hanley or something like that. Had a like, right pipe on him as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Um. Owen says, I played rugby at a union. The league is so much more intense. Uh, so many people can hide in a union game. Here's the thing as well. When I say rugby league is like a bleep test, you're literally doing that. You're 10 metre back and forward, yeah, retreating yeah. And, and attacking. You've got to move the defensive line up to uh, put pressure on the attack. In rugby union, they stand there. Right. Now, this alone means that the collisions are intensified in, in rugby league. Right. Because I'm running at you and you're running at me. So it's like a fucking car crash. <laughs> Whereas rugby union, I'm standing still, but you might have only picked the ball up there and then ran at me. It's not yeah. an intense collision. Right, okay. So like a, rug a rugby league tackle is multiples of the intensity of a tackle. So it's, it's harder every time you tackle and you're doing 10 times the tackles. Right. Madness. <laughs> to be fair, whenever I've watched either, and I don't watch a lot of it, it just looks a bit too violent for me. Me. I'm not into more like me. I know you are. You're a lunatic. But I'm not. <laughs> I'd rather not get me a kicked in whilst playing a sport, if I can be brutally honest. Um, so much more skill required for Union. No. Just, just no. No. What does that mean? I, I, I was a loose forward. Now, good loose forwards, like the, the fucking like generational loose forwards like Ellery, Ellery Hanley. Yeah, I've heard of it. They're going to fucking smash you. They're going to tackle the living fuck out of you. Then they're going to pick the ball up, beat a few men, mix play up, link play up, stuff like that. Well, the reason I'm not a professional rugby league player is I didn't do that. <laughs> I only did the defending part of the game. I was shit going forward. <laughs> right. I was quick, but, you know, I wasn't very good uh, going forward. I mean, you know, at least you had your time there in the academy. Someone to tell the grandkids, innit? Hey. Um, we pl I played against um, Australia as well. Really? In a test match, yeah. You know. Google a guy called Brent Tate. Brent Tate. Yeah. His neck's about as wide as my belly is now. Okay. Um, the week before, he um, had made his debut in the senior Australia team at mm. 17. At 17? 17. The guy was a fucking machine. He looked like Terminator. Jesus right? wept. 17 years old, played a full test match for Australia. The following week, plays against Stephen Housen from YouTube. Must have been like a fucking night off for him. Honestly, I don't think I made an inch on him all night. He just <laughs> fucked me up. Any time I got it, he was there. He folded me up and he fucked me off. I don't think there's any uh, shame in that, to be <laughs> brutally honest with you, mate. He's like trying to tackle a boulder yeah. every time I went near him. You don't him. need to be too embarrassed about that one. So yeah, Google him, Brent Tate. He fucked Brent me Tate. up, basically. <laughs> Seems to be a lot of people that know a lot or have a big interest in uh, rugby, which is... Uh, Interesting. A lot of Northerners watching, maybe. Yes, maybe there is. But yeah. So there you go, then. Um, so that's, co saying? that's covered the centre-back issue at Manchester United. <laughs> 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 I hope we've cleared that up for you, so now you know who we're going to be getting. See, as Shaz has, has got the fucking mood of the room in here, he go goes, on. your club became a joke when your fans didn't drive out Pogba. That's exactly what we're talking about, mate. He's took the pee all the time he's been there. <laughs> right. right okay yeah glad you, I'm glad you commented on that <laughs> I think Notch might have just googled him <laughs> what, a neck, what a neck cheese yeah <laughs> Joe S says is he related to Andy Tate uh, I don't think so uh, they cancelled a lot of the start stopping league with the intro of the I think there's a few people Pokemon. googling this lad here because Ross Murphy just said Jesus look at that now yeah. I, I can't tell you how much of a night off I give him well <laughs> 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 I'm going to have to look, have a little Google. There's a couple of times where I've said something fucking stupid. I know you're thinking, Steve, that's Steve, not you. Steve Housen say something stupid. There was once, there was a, uh, I played for Manchester. Um, when Manchester was playing National League 3. And my old man was a coach. And I think I was 16. Um, so I'm fucking 16. I was never big. So I'm probably fucking all of five foot nine at the time. You're just yeah. Googling him. Yeah, I am. 
<laughs> oh, what? <laughs> so look. He's got like some sort of thing on there, I think, to keep it in place. Yeah, he's a fucking unit. He played center. So he played it as a back. Yeah, he, he absolutely fucking bent me in half. Yeah, so right neck on him. Um, <laughs> yeah, he fucking murdered me. So there's a couple of times I, I say things like this. We beat our fucking opposite man. We win the game. Simple as that. Joe, no. pure cliche shit. Yeah. It's not changed. No. So before kickoff, that's my fucking vibe. I'm psyching myself up. Yeah. And I'm Passion. usually fucking very aggressive and fucking shouty. And I said something along the lines of, we beat our opposite man. We win the fucking game. And twice, someone's gone. You see who your opposite man is? <laughs> <laughs> so for Great Britain, I was playing centre. And I'm playing against that fucking animal. The, the, the guy with the neck that I've not seen anything like. The neck the size of Salford. The other time I was 16, yeah. there's a guy called Danny Averton, who's just, again, just an amateur player, local round here, a good fucking player. And he goes, um, he was about to kick off and I'm playing loose forward. I'm in the middle, I'm, wait, I'm in the middle of the kickoff. And I would always try and make the first tackle. That was yeah. all the thing I wanted to nah, do. Okay, fair enough. We're about to kick off. And uh, I go, fucking smash your fucking opposite man, win the fucking game, let's go. And he goes, yeah. see who your man is? Uh, and just as he says that, there's a giant of a man. He's, and he's a, if anyone's from Rotherham, in the in the comments, you probably know this guy because he is like he was an old pro who then played amateur and stuff like that. And it was him. He's called John Dudley. He's an oh. actual giant. Right. He's about six ten. He's an old bloke. He's not fast, but he's fucking enormous, Jay. And I'm sixteen. <laughs> and just at the time that he turns round, he's got thirteen on his back. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and again, I'm gonna I threw my entire fucking ancestry into him and didn't budge him. Mate, I love that. <laughs> um, Baggers, can you see that comment from Remedies? Right, it's fixed there. Someone asking about the Manscaped linked. It should be working now. Uh, Finley Beecroft Phillips says, did you ever play in Leeds? Steve? Yeah, I made my Super League Academy debut against Leeds. Oh. There you go. A couple of players you might have heard of, Chev Walker, JJ Buchanan. They packed me up and fucked me off and all. You might be seeing a fucking trend here. I was little. <laughs> I, mean, I can't say shit. I haven't played <laughs> rugby in my life, so I'm not about to criticise your rugby career. At least you had one. Girth on that neck, Jesus. About a foot long and all. I love that. Very northern way of speaking. Ever uh, play any Cumbrian team, Steve? This has become Stephen Allison's rugby career. Told you it? to do bits one day. <laughs> <laughs> Took rugby league short. <laughs> what about London Broncos, Steve? Lol. Uh, I never played against Broncos. When Steve was little podcast. Mm. When we were mint. Yeah, when we were mint, that's the new title in it. Well, well, we was also mint when I was little. Ah, there you go then. Yeah. Not so much in my 30s. Stephen could have played for Scotland. <laughs> uh, no, I actually played for Scotland. Um, so this is a funny story. Go on. What time are we on? Go on, you can wrap it up with this. Yeah. So, um, while I was at college, yeah. I had a phone call. Doing basic literacy. Nothing wrong with that. Did A level uh, maths, mm. maths, IT, and PE. A levels. I didn't finish it. No, I didn't get any A levels either. So I, um, I got a phone call from a, a fellow that was the coach of the Great Britain team, and he goes, "Where was you today?" And I was like, "Oh, why?" <laughs> What's with the questions? And he said, "We just had a trial for the England team. I was hoping to see you there." I went, "Oh, why?" And he said, "Because there's a home nations coming up in the next month," and I was like, "Oh." I didn't know. And he goes, right. He goes, well, we've got a problem here because he goes, I can't pick you for Great Britain and I wanted to pick you for Great Britain. Now, you already know that I get to play for Great Britain because I got oh. twatted off the guy with no neck. Yeah. Right. So there was a loop. What's the loop, you say? Yeah. So he goes, well, I, wa I had you in my mind to play for Great Britain, but you went to the fucking trial and I can only select players that play in the home <sighs> nations. Steven, he goes, Stephen, Stephen. Have you got any Scottish or Irish ancestry? And I went, oh, uh, no. Well, that's a lie. Well, it's not. Everyone's got Irish ancestry. Oh, right, okay. Well, none that counts. Right, right. So he goes, he goes, oh, good. And I was like, I definitely said no. <laughs> and he went, sound, I'll forward you some details then. Just look out for the post. All ah, right, he's, he's speaking in front of someone. Yeah. Right, I'm with you. I didn't know that. I'm fucking 18 and play rugby. I'm thick as fuck. Right, okay. I'm only marginally less thick now. Yeah, that's true. Whereas I might have gone, oh, I know what you're doing. Right. I was like, no, I said no. What, what, yeah. Where are you going? Um, so then a fucking pack arrives for me in the post and it's like, right, go to, who's at Crew and Allsager? Joe, um, MM, you've got a fucking, what do you call it? Campus in Crew. What? Imagine going, oh, mum, I've been accepted to Manchester University. All right, what part? Crew. Yeah. All right. right. Two right. hours away. Yeah. 
So they go, right. Um, basically, <laughs> I <laughs> turn Sorry, up. Go on. This, uh, basically, what happened is the Scotland team was not so good and they had space and they was like, right, well, let's get someone in. All right. So they got me in, played first game, played against Wales, had a fucking rate good game. Yeah. And I think I've got the VHS of it. If we can figure out a way oh, of putting a VHS mate, onto it. has got to be a way. There's always a way. People get VHSs onto YouTube so they, and all sorts. They made me learn the fucking yeah. Flower of Scotland. Right. I had to sing it in front of them. That was shit. Right. Proper shit. Yeah. And then um, played against Wales, had a fucking right good game. Uh, played against Ireland, had a good game. Played against England, played the worst game of my life. Not on purpose, but I knew the entire England team. So during when you know one player on a team, and then you two have a little thing. Well, what about when you're the only player the entire opposite team <laughs> knows? So they fucked me, basically. And I was also just, you know, I just got fucking done, basically. Yeah. And I was shit. Right. And apart I was the only the player. That, <laughs> I was apart only from the fact they all knew you, you got done and you were shit. You yeah. were doing well. Oh, I had a bad game. Do right. you just go, I did not have a good game. Yeah, today. Yeah. I made about four Story tackles. My it just fucking life. didn't go well for me. Um, and somehow still got selected to go. I was the only Scottish player. Scottish, yeah. To uh, to get selected. All right. Yeah. Well, someone said, and forgive me, uh, Ross, oh, there he is. Ross, you're on United. Is it just me? Or have they actually not talked about centre-backs yet? Centre-backs yet. I think we've covered centre-backs quite extensively on this podcast. I think anyone who's watched it all the way through will be proper enlightened about the centre-back situation at United and who's coming in in the summer. Cameron, just for anyone joining, the board outside on a new centre-back. Luke Shaw is our new ball playing centre-back, so we're chatting about Steve's rugby career. There you go, that clears all that. Someone as well, I missed it, who was, ah, who said they had ah. a bet on Steve Bruce in the 1991 Cup Winners Cup final and Sparky robbed him of him. Santa Notch quid. in the comments there. That was it, Wayne List, thank you. Wow. Santa Notch in the comments there has put in quotations, Steve Howison. If you actually search that, that was what they had my name down as in the um, like the match reports for playing for Scotland. Really? And I'm not sure it was deliberate. I think they just fucking spelled my name wrong. Right, okay. <laughs> so, because I, I tried, a, I was like, look. I was like, I wonder if there's any fucking info on this because it's internationals. Yeah. Like, it was a big thing. What is it? Hang on a minute. Go, what's it? Steve Howie. Howie said. Yeah, I think it's Steve. Didn't he used to play for New, uh, Newcastle? Right, I'm gone. Steve. I have searched this recently. So Howie said. Let's have a look. Oh, no, I've, got, I've, I've done the old... I'm going to search Rugby League Scotland as well, just see what comes up. Um, that might be it. Where is it? 2017. This is a long list. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that this makes great viewing, seeing two guys sat on the phone scrolling looking for Steve Housen. So you can play this game at home if you want. Have a search for Steve Housen and see if you can find him and his mates with big necks. <laughs> um, and in the meantime if you've not done so already you can check out the Manscaped link uh, that's in the description you get a discount on that also we've got the game coming up on Sunday we're playing West Bromwich Albion are you here Sunday a lot? yep soft lad yep he's going to be here Adam McCall's going to be here Joe Smith's going to be here so we're going to have the pre-match show with him and Baggers then you're going to have the watch along and you're going to have all the post-match reaction as well uh, you've done a transfer review haven't you? I have so yeah. if you want to hear about centre-backs and targets and all the Shit, we should have been speaking about on this podcast. It'll be in his transfer review, I'll take it. So don't panic. Send tomorrow morning there. That'll be out there. So make sure you watch that. Um, also, for members, there's a new members video with me and Baggers that's up on the channel. Um, anything else you've got to add? That's enough from you. Uh, that's been Stephen Allison. I've been Jay Motti. This has been an extensive, insightful look at United's centre back situation. Thanks for watching.